Analysis and judgment. What does behavior mean? It's how you conduct, right? Yourself. The same thing goes with cost behavior. What we're looking for when we talk about cost behavior is how the costs are changing, fluctuating, varying, those types of things. So, CBP. We like to call it a cost volume profit analysis. Answer some of these questions that you see. Um, what do we need to do in sales or revenue so that we can hit our target income? And clearly target income would have to be the income that we need in order to survive, right? To get through day to day. And um, what is the change in income if prices um, happen to decline or even if they increase, obviously the likely of them increasing would be better than them declining, right? How much income increase if we, um, how much does income increase if we install a new machine or reduce labor costs or add new equipment or something like that, cut down on departments? What is the income effect if we charge the sales mix to, of our products or services? So, for instance, some companies may only do um, products, right? What happens if they start mixing that with some different services within their uh, factory? How does that change their income, either for the better or in a negative way? So first, let's talk about fixed costs. The word fixed means constant, unchanged, right? The thing about it is, even though that means constant or unchanged, it's different based on total cost versus per unit cost. So in other words, here it is, fixed cost, we know that means constant and unchanged, but with fixed total costs, um, they're gonna remain constant. But when we talk about fixed cost per unit, that's gonna change based on whatever the volume is. If the volume increases, um, then the cost per unit is gonna decrease. So that's what we mean by behavior. Now that's just for fixed costs. Total costs remain unchanged, but per cost, per unit costs are going to change based on volume. Variable cost means that it's not constant, right? Variable or variety, meaning total variable costs can change based on activity or volume. Meaning if sales go up, then more than likely total variable costs are going to do what? Not go up. Yeah. They may decrease. Oh. That's the good thing about variable. It's going to either grow up or it's going to go down. It could be a mixture of the two. Now, cost per unit does not change for variable. So even though variable means un, you know unchanging, um, I mean, I'm sorry, changing constantly, variable costs per unit are going to change um, are not going to change if activity increases or decreases, but the total costs do. So what's the difference between fixed and variable? Fixed costs, total costs do what? Stays constant, right? But per unit fixed costs do what? Fluctuate based on volume or activity. Variable costs, total costs, are they unchanging or um, do they change? Variable, total variable. cost, variable, total cost. It changes, right? But variable cost per unit, does it change or is it constant? Constant. That's something you might need to write down so you know the difference. Fixed total cost do not change. Fixed cost per unit change based on activity. Variable total cost change based on volume or activity. Variable fixed costs per unit do not change, remain constant regardless of volume or activity. And then we have what we like to call mixed costs. Now mixed costs are going to be a combination of both fixed and variable costs. Now there may be certain levels of 
the fixed versus the variable. The example they give you here is a facility, right? Um, they're talking about the utilities. There may be a portion of the utility bill that is going to be fixed or constant, meaning that it is not going to be changed based on how much you produce. But there is also a portion of that utility bill that may very well change based on what? Usage, consumption, right? And we know usage or consumption is going to depend on the activity level, the volume, whether or not it's increasing or decreasing, whether or not you had to have more labor, more equipment, those types of things. Stepwise. So the reason why they call it stepwise is just basically the flow in which it goes. The cost is not saying that the volume or the cost do not increase because they do, okay? We know that based on activity. However, as costs rise, the flow of those costs on this graph go in a step direction. So it might be a spurt starting here at zero, going up, cost is 40000 and it's constant, 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 all the way up to about 700 units, right? And then it spikes up to 80,000 in cost. Constant, 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 all the way over to about 1,300 units. Spikes up. Now we're at 120,000 in cost. Constant, 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 all the way up into 2,000 units. This, what we like to call, or even this middle line, relevant range. Meaning, the behavior or the process in which these costs are rising is still on the same range and going up and up and up. You don't see anything going, spurting down, then back up. It's straight step motion, right? That's a little different from curvilinear costs. Because notice, now it changes. Stepwise was started off at 40000 in costs. Went all the way over to about 750 in volume units, right? Straight up, that's still stepwise motion. Going over throughout the relevant range down to about 1,300 units. And then goes up one more step. But this time, it goes over and what happens? What happens to the line now? You notice how it went up? It's curving up, right? So it's either going to curve up or curve down, but it can do it at any moment. So measuring cost behavior. <coughs> Give me one second. Okay, so now we're talking about classifying costs. We've already talked about fixed or variable, and it's three different methods we have. We got scatter diagrams, hollow method, least squares, regression, right, which I'm sure you've heard of before in math. Scatter diagrams, all this means is these little asterisks or stars that you see on this graph. They're pointed based on the amount of units that have been produced, right? But do you see the flow of the line? That line looks kind of what? Just look at the line only. What is that line? Is it, it is it fixed? What is it? It's not variable. Not variable because it's not constantly changing based on what? It's total. It's the total. Yes. So it's not per unit.
Okay, so the next one. Scatter. Again, what has happened now? What has changed? It's still the same plots, right? But what has happened? What are they showing you in this blue line? It's like it's, it's cut up. No, it's cut. They're showing you the change in the cost. So this, what they give you up here, unit variable cost equals slope equals what? Over units, right? So what they're just trying to show you with these same plots, hello, um, is that while this line is constant here, these plots are not. They're showing you where the costs tended to change. They were pretty constant before we got about here. And then it started going above whatever the line was, the fixed line. High low method. That's generally where you look at the highest of units, lowest of units, highest of cost, lowest of cost, and find out the difference between the two. So they're giving you an example here. High level for October, the amount of units, high level, I mean, a low level for February. They're giving you the units there and showing you the change between the two, basically subtracting low from high. Cost, they're doing the same exact thing. Variable cost per unit is determined as change in cost divided by change in units. That's what that graph is showing you. So now they're just showing how they did that going across instead of subtracting here they're going across this way right horizontal and then showing you that 8500 over the 50,000 units to get the variable cost per unit remember how fixed costs total costs do not change right total costs were 29,000 29,000 and then fixed cost per unit, 17 um, cents times that high activity level of 67,500. And so total fixed cost, 17,525 units. Least squares. Um, yeah, they say that this is covered in cost accounting courses, which we don't offer here. But um, generally, when you do a least squares, you probably would use Excel or your graphing calculator or something to that nature. Okay, so break even point. What does it mean to break even? Basically, it was no, no profit or no loss. You just balanced it out. Yes. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. So break even can be expressed in either dollars or units, um, sometimes in both. <clears throat> the reason why break even is so important is because the, the company needs to know exactly how much um, in sales they need to make to make sure that they can make budget, right? And they also know as far as units are concerned how low they are not allowed to go in order to uh, make budget. So now we're talking about contribution margin. Contribution margin is found by taking your sales and subtracting your variable cost, right? And then you also subtract from that the fixed cost. But the question is, why do we care only about the contribution margin? Why could we have not done sales revenue minus variable cost, then minus fixed cost, and then found the contribution margin? Why is this so important?
What is it for? To help the manager to classify the costs. What kind of costs? What do you mean classify? Yes, I think. Huh? I will manage to classify costs by the contribution budget. No. I'm asking. Yes, I think. Yes, I think. No. I'm asking. Why couldn't we have just subtracted both costs from um, the sales to get the contribution margin? Why is it so important? Because it's the amount by which the project unit selling by exceed the total value for first project. <laughs> well, you don't know why. What are you reading? I'm getting it. I am. Huh? Well, we have our bearable costs. We have that. Why do we care about contribution margin? In other words, what they're saying is if bearable costs are close to your revenue amount, then what happens? Isn't that a good justification to tell a business that, okay, if, if you're, okay, like for instance, this example here, variable costs are 140000 right? How far is that away from 200000 60000 So I'm closer to 200000 than I am closer to 60000 right? So what that means is if I look at my variable costs and see how much revenue, when I go to budget the next time, I know that in variable costs, I need to at least come in around 140 or a little less. So I probably need to produce not too much more than too much more than whatever, what are they producing, 2,000 units? Okay, so contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin is sales minus uh, variable cost. Contribution margin ratio is the contribution margin per unit divided by sales price per, per unit. Um, when you're doing per unit contribution margin, you just simply take the selling price per unit minus the variable cost per unit to get that contribution margin per unit, and then you divide that into the sales price per unit. So they're showing you with this example, the contribution margin per unit was $30, divided by that selling price per unit, which was $100, gives us a contribution margin ratio of 30%. Okay, so compute and break even. They had sales revenue of 200000 right? And in order for us to get break even, what do we need to do? Fixed costs were about 24000 That's what they're showing you, right? Mm -hmm. How many units must Rydell sell to cover its fixed costs break even? If you're taking the 24000 fixed costs dividing by the contribution margin per unit, you're going to get 800 units. So what that means is they cannot sell below 800 units. Otherwise, they won't even break even. Now, that was a break even um, in units. You also need to know how to do uh, break even in dollars, which we'll do in the next slide. But that's just showing fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. If you don't have contribution margin per unit, you're going to have to figure out what first. You're going to have to figure out the selling price per unit. And then the variable cost per unit. If you don't have, and this is the way it goes, if you do not have the contribution margin 
per unit. You need the selling price per unit. And you need to have the variable cost per unit. If you don't have the contribution margin, you need sales and you need variable costs in order to get that. And in order for you to get the contribution margin ratio, what are you going to have to do? Fixed cost, cost divided by? No, no, no. Contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin per unit divided by sales price per unit. Right. Contribution margin unit per unit, which is the $30 divided by $100 of sales price per unit. Now, break even, you need fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. What about a break even in dollars? Fixed Total cost. fixed cost divided by what? Contribu contribution margin ratio. And they're showing you here that you need your unit contribution margin um, uh -huh, per unit and then divided by unit sales price. So this part you don't need preparing a CDP um, chart. Now sometimes you may have to work with the, not the actual amounts, okay? In any event that you don't have the actual amounts, the process does not, does not change. The concept is still the same um, as far as the way in which you get those units. Computing income from sales and costs. Now, sometimes when you're doing income, you can't just find the income. You have to make sure that it's pre-taxed, right? So income pre-tax equals sales minus variable costs minus fixed costs. That's important because it may be sometimes where you need to find the pre-tax income. The example they give you here, they expect to sell 1,500 units, 100 each. $100 for each unit next month. Fixed costs are about $24,000. Variable cost uh, per unit is about $70. What amount of income should Rydell expect? So sales, you're going to have to calculate those first. 1,500 units times the selling price of $100 equals how much? $1,500 units times $100. One hundred and fifty thousand. Now, for your variable cost, um, you're gonna have to take the variable cost per unit, which is seventy dollars. Multiply that by the fifteen hundred units. That gives you how much? Why are you not using your calculator? It's 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 thinking of one right back. I'm very cold. I'm very cold too. That's why I said the quick. We do this. I I know stuff. So now that's 105,000. So we got 150,000 minus 105,000, which leaves what? 150,000 minus 105,000 should leave you how much? 45,000. 45,000. So the 45,000 minus 24,000 equals what? 21,000. 21,000. So that's how we find our income pre-tax. <coughs> computing sales so you can meet the target income. This is why the pre-tax income is so important if you don't have it. Finding the pre-tax income is going to help you to find unit sales and dollar sales for target income. I mean, um, unit sales, yes, and dollar sales for break-even. So fixed cost plus target pre-tax income divided by contribution margin per unit is going to give you break-even in what? Unit sales. Unit sales. Fixed cost plus target pre-tax income uh, divided by contribution margin ratio is going to give you dollar sales. Now, how do you find contribution margin per unit? I'm just making sure you know it. Sales per unit divided by variable cost per unit. Yes. And contribution margin ratio. Paula, you said the what now? Contribution margin per unit. It's sales price per unit minus. Minus variable. Minus. Yes, minus. 
contribution minus. margin per unit. Oh, yeah, sales price, sales price per unit minus, minus variable per cost, cost yes. per yeah. unit. Contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin per unit divided by sales price. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. This is ratio. Before tax income um, is when you're converting what you thought you were going to hit as far as the target to income. So target net, net income divided by 1 minus the tax rate. And you'll always be given the tax rate. This is an example. They have a monthly target net income of 9000 Unit selling price $100. Fixed cost twenty four thousand, variable cost per unit seventy dollars, and a tax rate is twenty five percent. So what has happened here? Some of that information we don't even need. Mm -hmm. All we need is the target net income of nine thousand, and we're going to divide that by one minus the twenty five percent or point twenty five, which gives us twelve thousand. That's our pre tax income, target pre tax income. So this example is they're showing you in dollars. What we just did was in what? What did we just do? Target pre-tax income. So now fixed cost plus target pre-tax income divided by contribution margin ratio um, is going to give us our dollar sales. So in this particular example, 24000 plus the 12000 that we found in the previous part, Divided by the 30%. Now, the question is, where did the 30% come from? It was 25%. Look in your books. Remember, it was 25%. So why did we divide it oh, by? Oh, the hundred minus one hundred minus seventy. Yeah, minus seventy. One hundred minus seventy. One hundred what minus seventy? Selling price. You spend your money minus the unit variable cost. You didn't get a percent from that. One hundred divided by seventy. It should be a percent. It's sad, but you guys didn't get what I was asking. I did. I did. You didn't. I asked you what the 30% was. What's the 30%? Margin ratio, which you get by doing what? What's the contribution margin ratio equation? Uh, selling, selling price, selling price, but no, selling price per unit minus. No, yeah. Contribution margin ratio. Contribution yes. margin, uh, contribution unit, unit. Divided. divided by sale. Divided. Yes, by sale. Not subtract. Okay. I really need you to write that down. We don't need those kind of issues. 70 divided by 100. Uh -huh. But no. Yeah. It, yeah. Doesn't give, it doesn't give 30%. I asked you, how do you get contribution margin ratio? We need to get it down pat. Because otherwise, you're going to be flustered about what you need to do. Yeah, I would be glad to do How do you get contribution margin ratio? Ratio. Not Easy. contribution margin per unit. Not contribution margin sales. Contribution margin ratio. Contribution margin per unit uh -huh. divided by sales price per unit. Okay. So that's how we got the $30. Yeah. Right? Because the contribution margin per unit was what? 100 minus 70, but it does. It's 30. Right, and then we took that 30 and divided it into 100, right? Isn't that what you just told me? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's just what you told me. So, contribution margin ratio, again, it's contribution margin per unit. Divided, divided into price. selling price, right? Okay. Okay, the selling price is the one and check. Okay. Right. I see it now. Because I remember I did so one one like that for the learning yeah. small something like that. Mm -hmm. I, I remember I did that. Mm. Target net income in units. Unit sales. So 
fixed cost plus target pre-tax income divided by contribution margin per unit. Fixed cost plus target pre-tax income divided by contribution margin per unit. So that 24000 in fixed costs plus that 12000 we got with the target pre-tax income divided by our contribution margin per unit, $30 from the previous slide, we get 1200 units. That's what we're targeting. Now, margin of safety. What is margin of safety about? Why do we care about margin of safety? Why is margin of safety so important? It tells you up here. Stop reading in your book. Margin of safety is the amount by which sales can drop before what? Isn't that the same as what? Is that the same as break even? No. Tell me the difference. Break even is when you don't have a, a loss or gain. Uh huh. But if you drop below break even, what happens? You have, a loss. you have a loss. So how are they different? This one is a safety. Safety, break even, call it what you want. Still, how are they different? Break even, we determine in sale, we determine in dollars and in units to make sure that the company does not go below, right? Can we equate that to safety, to margin of safety? Or is it different? First of all, what is the equation for break even? Let's start back there. How do you get break even in dollars? Oh, in dollars. Or in units? Uh, fixed cost divided by the weight average. So, Fixed cost divided by what was it? The weight average. The weighted average contribution margin. Yeah. Uh, the contribution margin per, per composite unit. We got two types of. Um, no, what are you reading? I don't break know even what you are. In I units see. at the very beginning uh, of the point. Okay. Let me, let me, yes. Fixed cost divided by contribution margin per unit. So, fixed cost divided by contribution margin per okay. unit. Yes. And we are finding break even so that what? The company knows where they need What's to be. What's it in the book? You said stop reading the book. I want you, because I'm asking you a different question. I'm trying to get you to answer my question. What does it say about break even? Why do we use break even? Why do we care about break even? The concept of the break even is absolute community. Okay, so we're trying to make sure that the sales level um is if it's that break even, that means that we made exactly the amount of sales that we needed to make. That's what we're trying to say with break even, right? <laughs> we, if we have a break even of fifty thousand and we met fifty thousand, that means we didn't earn a profit, but we also didn't lose anything. Margin of safety is dealing with what? Risk condition. What you expect to make. Subtracting what you know you have to at least make. In other words, if break even is saying we got to hit 50000 no matter what, because if we don't, we're going to lose money. If we do, then that's great. We're okay. If I expect, though, to sell 60000 then obviously... I'm making my level at 60000 and not necessarily the 50000 break even. It's great to break even because that means we don't go out of business, but I would much rather do 60000 because to me, that's the level I feel safe. 
Okay. Right? So expected sales minus break-even sales divided by expected sales. In this particular example, this company, they sell 100000 and their break-even is how much? Do you see what I mean by your level of safety can be up here? The break even can be somewhere down here. Who wants to just break even? Yes, you do in the event that your sales decline. But your comfortable um, comfort zone or call it whatever you want, where you feel the most um, safe is going to be your margin of safety. In other words, yes, I know I need to make 80, but to me, I'm only going to feel comfortable if we make 100,000. So here, 100,000 minus the 80,000 divided by the 100,000 means 20%. Now, 20% is just basically saying what? What is the 20%? What does that signify? It's a margin of safety. It's a margin of safety ratio, but why do we care about that? When they look at those reports and they determine if margin of safety was even factored in, what part do we care about the most? That 20% signifies the percent of sales. Okay. So if the margin of safety is 20%, then that means 20% of my expected sales are at least safe to be met. Okay. Um, sensitivity analysis, or basically CDP. Remember how I said sometimes you have to revise numbers mm -hmm. because the numbers that you did before may or may not be um, not necessarily right because it's all an estimate, but may not be close enough to what you might actually do. So this company, they want to buy a new machine. They have fixed cost of $24,000 um, that goes up to $30,000, but their unit variable costs go from $70 to $60, which in a perfect world, costs going down, that's pretty good, right? Because that means variable cost per unit going from $70 to $60 means that sales are doing what? Going up, because we know variable cost per unit change based upon, I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Yes, variable costs change. per unit change based on what? The volume. The volume. Right. So if volume goes up, price cost should go down and vice versa. So the $100 per unit selling price is going to remain unchanged. So now they're asking you to revise break even. Fixed cost of $24,000 divided by the contribution margin ratio, which is what? Because we're going back to this over and over again. Yes. How do you get the, the contribution margin ratio? Oh, the sale. In order for you to get the ratio, you need to find out the contribution margin per unit. Yeah. Contribution margin per unit is sales minus variable cost per unit. Right? Sales per unit minus variable cost per unit. And then once you get the contribution margin per unit, you take that and divide it by what? Selling. Selling price. So in this case, how did we know that it was 40%? Because did they show us the fixed cost? Fixed cost, how many units are they doing? No, that's the fixed cost, but how many units? They don't say the amount of units. So we don't know the, the fixed cost per unit. But, no, we don't need to know the fixed cost. Selling price, $100 minus $60 now, right? Gives us forty dollars contribution margin per unit. You said seventy minus sixty. Mm -mm. Seventy went down to sixty. Okay. Oh, so we're like doing a revision. One hundred minus sixty. Correct. Um, now it's forty dollars contribution margin per unit. Forty dollars divided by one hundred gives us the forty percent. So now we have revised break even points in dollars of seventy five thousand. CVP formulas can be modified for use when a company sells more than one product. So this is where we get to what you were reading about the composite units. Unit contribution margin is replaced with what? 
contribution margin for a composite unit. What do you think they mean by composite? And you can read in your books if you choose. What do they mean about by composite unit? So what does that mean? That means that this manufacturer has several different products, right, that they're dealing with. And they're mixing them. And they may not even be the same products. May, may not. More than likely are not. Um, maybe under the same umbrella, maybe have different names um, and are composed, composite, um, differently, right? So what we want to do is we want to use the contribution margin for the comp composite um, unit simply because they may be similar to whatever the traditional unit was. That's all about sales mix, right? So it says composite unit is composed of specific numbers for each product in proportion to product sales. And then sales mix is the ratio of the volumes of the various products. So if you look in your books on page 877, this is a tissue company. They got three different types of tissue, basic, ultra, and budget, right? That's what we mean by sales mix. Same product, different name. And what we're doing here is we're going to use the composite in order to find the break even instead of using just the, the regular old one product. You know, some manufacturers may use that because it's a, a lot easier. Those with different names, same product, different value, different quality might do the whole composite break even type of situation. So resultant break even formula for composite unit sales. Fixed cost over what? Contribution. Contribution margin per composite unit. And hopefully they give you the example that's in the book. Yes, they do. So, oh, I thought it was tissue. It was haircuts. All right. Well, <laughs> it sounded like tissue, right? Yeah. Basic, ultra, uh, budget, whatever. Okay. Annual fixed costs are 192000 And the break-even, uh, we're supposed to find a break-even point in composite units and in number of units for each haircut with the sales mix that they have going on. So they give you the selling price for each one of those haircuts, the variable cost per unit for each one of those haircuts, and we know that unit contribution or, what am I trying to say, contribution margin per unit is sales minus variable cost, right? So the contribution margin per unit, $7, $14, and $8. Sales mix ratios. Four, two, and one. Where did they get those numbers from? Four, two, and one. Where did they get those from? Too cold, yeah. It's too cold. Anyway, ratio four, two, and one. Just remember that. So, what they're doing here, we found a contribution margin, sales uh, ratio four, two, and one, weighted contribution. We took our contribution margin ratio, I mean, a contribution margin per unit, multiplied it by the ratio, and then to come up with the weighted contribution of $28. $28 and $8 equals total contribution margin per composite unit of $64. So now looking at the break even, break even means for us to take fixed costs and divide it by what? Contribution margin what? Don't read that. You already know it. Doesn't matter whether it's a composite unit or just a regular unit. Fixed cost divided by what? Contribution margin per unit, right? One hundred and ninety-two thousand in sales divided by, I mean, I'm sorry, fixed cost divided by the composite unit total uh, contribution margin per unit total of sixty-four dollars means that three thousand composite units. 
they keep putting composite in red because you need to know out of those 3,000, that's not going to be 3,000 of ultra, 3,000 of basic, 3,000 of all together mix, right, sales mix. And I keep wanting to say it's tissue because I keep saying it, but it's haircut, sorry. All right, so 3,000 composite units. And this is how it breaks out. This is how they're showing you back to those ratios, four, two, and one. Four times the 3,000 means 12,000 haircuts. Two times 3,000, 6,000 haircuts. One times 3,000, 3,000 haircuts. What does this mean? That's their break even point. Meaning, if they hit 12,000, hit 6,000, and hit 3,000, there's no profit to be made. There's also no profit to be lost, right? That's different from margin of safety. They just want you to verify. How do you come back and verify? Remember, these were the amount of haircuts for each one. Total contribution is basically your contribution margin per unit times the sales volume, right? How do we know it's correct? Because it equal back to what? What's this? What is the number? What's the number? What is it? Fixed cost. That's what you're trying to get back to. So, all right, so exercise 21-5 says, Bloom Company Management predicts that it will incur fixed costs of $160,000 in earned pre-tax income of 164000 in the next period. Its expected contribution margin ratio is 25%. Use this information to complete the amount of one total dollar sales to total variable cost. So if we're trying to find dollar sales as far as um, okay, so using the, the contribution margin, what's the equation for that? The contribution margin. Not contribution margin. But if we're trying to find out total sales, dollar sales, what is the equation? Fixed cost plus target pre-tax. Divided by contribution margin ratio. So fixed cost plus target pretext mm -hmm. divided by contribution, contribution margin ratio. Mm -hmm. What's the numbers? Okay. Go ahead. Uh huh. Plus, plus what? Plus one hundred and sixty-four. Okay. Divided by. 25%, what's the amount? One hundred twenty-nine. Huh? One thousand. One million two thousand. Two hundred ninety-six. One million two hundred ninety-six thousand. Yes. All right. The second part asks for us to um, find out the total variable cost. How are we going to find total variable cost? Part one. How do you find total variable cost? You got everything except for variable cost, so it makes sense for you to do what? You just found sales, right? Sales one million two hundred and ninety six thousand minus what? Fixed cost. Of one hundred and sixty thousand. What else? Minus your uh, pre-tax income. Pre-tax income, which was how much? So we're left with how much? Nine hundred and seventy-two thousand. Good. Moving 
21-9 says a, a jeans maker is designing a new line of jeans called the Slims. The jeans will sell for $205 per pair and cost $164 per pair in variable cost to make. One, compute the contribution margin per pair. Two, compute the contribution margin ratio. Three, describe what the contribution margin ratio reveals about this new jean line. So the first thing for us to do is the contribution margin, which is selling price minus what? Do you have this before I? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> So contribution margin equals selling price minus what? Okay, so that means the selling price for this is how much? $205 minus what? $164 which means that a uh, contribution margin is what? $41. $41. And we need to also find in number two, the contribution margin ratio, which is what? Uh -huh. Divided by sales price. In this case, we had a contribution margin of $41 divided by what? 205, which gave us a contribution margin ratio of what? 20%. 20%. Now three. What does that imply? What was the what does the contribution margin of 20% imply? Remember how I told you, not a number. It told you to explain. Describe what the contribution margin ratio reveals about this new jeans line. Twenty percent or twenty percent for each dollar uh, sale means that what's twenty percent of one dollar? Twenty cents. Mm -hmm. So that means twenty cents goes towards each uh -uh, fixed cost which is not there, okay. but that's what contribution margin ratio is for. For every dollar, 20% of every dollar that they earn, 20 cents, which is 20% of one dollar, is going towards fixed cost and the overall profit, okay? okay. Um, moving right along. So they are, they are looking to pay me, right? Mm -hmm. The fixed cost. Yes. In the fixed cost, we, we, we find overhead. Factory overhead. Why? No. Mm -hmm. Where did you get that from? No, I'm asking you. Think, what are you saying? Fixed in cost? In fixed cost, yeah. Two cents. Yeah. What we got? 20 cents? Yeah. For the, for the, for the, like, uh, uh, the manager or something like that. No? Well, it says goes towards fixed cost. Fixed cost could be a combination, because remember, some part of fixed costs, total fixed costs, do they remain constant or do they change? Fixed. Fixed. Total? Change. No, the change. Mixed. Yeah, total change. 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 Fixed oh, no. cost per unit change is based on volume. volume. So we can't just say, oh, so the fixed cost goes to factory overhead because factory overhead would mean indirect labor and oh. indirect situations, right? So we can honestly say that that 20 cents goes towards fixed costs, which may be a combination of both overhead and some direct labor. Okay. Um, yeah. Exercise 21-12. Refer to exercise 21-10, which we did not do. We should do it. We're going to have to. Can't do it. 12. Yeah. Exercise 21-10. Yeah. Without doing it, not 10. Without 10. So exercise 21 dash 10 is a part of the job. Ooh. So 
exercise 21-10, let's start there. Blanchard Company manufactures a single product that sells for $180 per unit and whose total variable costs are $135 per unit. The company's annual fixed costs are $562,500. One, use this information to compute the company's contribution margin, B, contribution margin ratio, C, break-even point in units, and D, break-even point in dollar of sale. So the first part with finding the contribution margin per unit. Um, 180. Wait a minute, 20% to $1 equals 0. 0.20 cents for contribution. Okay. Contribution margin per unit. What do we do? Uh, sales minus variable. Sales minus variable. What's the numbers? One hundred and eighty dollars minus one hundred and thirty-five equals forty-five dollars per unit. Next contribution margin ratio. Uh, 45. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What is it? Yes, you do. Uh, contribution margin divided by what? Uh um asking what's the equation? Sales price. Oh, Sales yeah. price. So contribution margin is forty five dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Divided by what? One eighty. One hundred and eighty dollars, which gives us what? Twenty five percent. And then they want you to do break even in units. What's the um equation? Fixed cost. Uh huh. Oh, Fixed cost. What? Isn't it divided by contribution margin uh, per unit? Yeah. You said for the units, right? Uh huh. So, what were the fixed costs? Uh huh. Divided by what contribution margin? Forty-five. Forty-five gives us what for break-even in units? I mean, twelve thousand five hundred. Twelve thousand five hundred break even in sales dollars. Um, fixed costs divided by EMI. So fixed cost divided by contribution margin ratio. Fixed costs were five hundred and sixty-two thousand. Five hundred divided by twenty-five percent. Uh huh. Oh, how much is it for the break-even in dollars? That's what it is. Is that what you got? Mm -hmm. No. Why didn't you get that? Am I right? Am I right? Five, six, two, five hundred. Times twenty-five percent. Twenty-five. Or point twenty-five. You got one million four. No, one forty sixty-five. Mm -hmm. Calculate it again. Five hundred sixty-two thousand five hundred times point twenty-five. Five. Five. Yes, that's five point two. I'm sorry, not times. Divide, 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 divide. Divide it by point. Divide. 
Okay, two million, two fifty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exercise twenty one dash twelve now. Refer to exercise 21-10, prepare contribution margin and income statement for Blanchard Company showing sales, variable costs, fixed costs at the break-even point. If the company's fixed costs increase by $135,000, what amount of sales and dollars is needed to break even? So first thing we need to do is do this contribution margin income statement. Find that in your book so you can tell me how to set it up. Contribution margin. Yep, contribution margin income statement. Is that where it is? I don't know. I'm not looking at it. Yeah. Starting off with sales. Um, what were the sales? You just figured them out. Two million two hundred and fifty thousand. What's next? Variable cost. How much? What? How many units? Are you selling? What was the break even in units? Twelve thousand five hundred. What's the uh, variable cost per unit? That's the contribution margin. What's the variable cost per unit? One thirty-five. So how much does that equal out? Equal out to? No, don't say that. She says shoot. Yes, she said that. Okay, what's next? Remember contribution margin, right? What's the contribution margin? You calculated that, did you not? Uh uh. What is it? Five hundred and sixty-two thousand five hundred. Five hundred. And fixed costs for how much? But no, listen. The fixed cost is five hundred sixty-two. And that's fine. That's fine. How else would you have gotten contribution margin? You had how many units? <coughs> 12,500? And if you would have multiplied that by your contribution margin per unit, you would have still gotten 562,500. Oh, yeah, right. And this is net income. Second part, they want us to. Oh, they got zero dollar. Uh, uh, they got zero. <laughs> no, it's about break even, though. Remember? Yeah. Oh, okay. Otherwise, it would have just been probably a number there. Um, second part is they want us to figure out what would be the break even in sales dollars since the. Um, fixed costs have increased to 135. So now we're doing like a revision, right? First of all, you find break even by doing what? The break even of fixed costs. But this is a revision. So what do you do? Original fixed costs plus what? New. Fixed costs divided by CMR, contribution margin ratio. In this case, what was the original fixed cost? Uh uh, fixed cost. 562,500 plus what's the new amount? What's the new amount of fixed cost? They stated oh. it. Oh, and we need to divide this by what contribution margin ratio? Um, 45. 
25%, which means that our break even in dollars, since it has changed, is what now? Uh, 2790000 Are you okay, Miss Foster? I didn't hear your voice. Are you okay? You are, you are freezing. That's why you didn't talk. I, I feel that. Because even me, I'm freezing. Can we go now? No. Still got three more problems. So we'll do it. My goodness. All right. Exercise 21. Uh, That's 13. You know what? You don't need to do that one. That's kind of like the same one. We just want to do that. 24. 14. 14, which is basically another uh, statement like I did up here. units did they sell or expect to sell? Uh, 40000 At what price? $200. What's the amount? $800,000. That can't be. Costs. What are those? Still with the same forty thousand units times what price? A new one. What is it? One forty. How much? Oh, you want to come in? Yes. Say it again, Mr. Beebe. Five million six hundred thousand. What happened to you, Mr. Dostan? <laughs> What's the contribution margin? What's the contribution margin? <laughs> Fixed cost. Or how much? They said that that didn't change. How much a fixed cost? 
Now, income before taxes. Did they give you that amount pre-tax? You calculated it in the previous one. Oh. What was the income? The net income? Mm-mm, I didn't net income. What was the last amount that you figured out on exercise 21 10? Oh, million. Million. oh no, before that. Twelve. Twelve fifteen. No. Yeah, we don't have to say it's 10. No, what about 13? No, 12. 2,790,000. Mm -hmm. The variable cost money. Oh, 1,687,500. No, that's not right. Okay. I'm no. sorry. Okay. Oh. Hey, um, <clears throat> you can text. They expect to sell how many? Oh, subtract up there. Subtract the fixed cost from the contribution market. Minus fixed cost. Uh huh. Contribution margin minus fixed cost. Two thousand five four two million four hundred. Uh huh. Minus five hundred and sixty-two thousand five hundred. One million eight hundred thirty-eight thousand. One million eight seven five hundred. Yeah. One eight eight three seven five hundred. Three seven or three eight. Seven or seven. Three seven. So what are going to be the income taxes? They said twenty percent of what? Of the return. No, of, of income tax Pre-income, right? No. 1,837,500. What's this amount? 20% times that? 367,500. Which means net income is how much? Subtracting. All right. One more problem. Go. Give me all that you have. Exercise 21-15. Nomeray company management predicts 390,000 of variable costs, 430,000 of fixed costs, and a pre-tax income of 155,000 in the next period. Management also predicts that the contribution margin per unit will be $9. Use this information to one, compute total expected dollar sales for the next period, and two, number of units expected to be sold um, next period. So, what's the equation for pre tax income? Pre-tax income. Pre-tax income equals what? Pre-tax income? Right, pre-tax income. Not divided. Subtract. So what is it? 
You don't know sales, right? We have to find them. What do you know? What amount do you know? We know the fixed cost. What's the fixed cost? Uh, 430,000. What's the variable? variable? We know, we know. 390,000. They got, they got the fixed cost income. Right, what's that? 100. So what's sales? So it could 430 minus 290 divided by 155. Where did you get a divide? Why are you saying uh, divide? No, no, it should be minus, yes. Right. How much is it? Uh, it is 150. Think about what you're doing. 430,000. Look, you're trying to get this to here, right? Yes. So it wouldn't it make minus. sense? Would it make sense? To add these two and then subtract out this? What's the amount? Quickly, she's freezing back there. 115,000. No. Adding 430,000 plus 390,000. What do you get? And then add 155. Nine hundred seventy-five. Now do the math and make sure it's right. Nine hundred seventy-five thousand minus four hundred thirty thousand minus three hundred ninety thousand. And tell me if we, it's right. One two five. All right. So number two, we got to find unit sales. How do you find unit sales? Fixed cost plus what? Look at exhibit 21.23 in your books. 21.23. Fixed cost plus target pre-tax income. C M per unit. What's the amount? What's fixed cost? What is your target pretext? You just figured it out. The way it's already up there. One hundred fifty-five thousand. All day. He's serious about his study. Okay. What's the contribution margin per unit? It stated it in the problem. Nine dollars. What are our unit sales? Or what should they be? Sixty-five thousand units. You are free. Oh, no, I will not see you again until the seventh. Please do not forget to come to class. And don't save nothing. Finish everything before. Don't save nothing. Save and exit. <laughs> That's crazy. You guys have a great holiday.